here at TEDx Manipal University. Butterflies are one of the most beautiful of insects, an amazing creation of nature. They have fascinated man since the ages. Their colorful fluttering wings invite our awe. Children love to chase them, and poets get inspired to write poems about them. Their strange life patterns baffles even the wisest scientists. While nature lovers owe their gratitude for the priceless load played by these beautiful creatures in perpetuating life on earth. The butterfly indeed is a unique and amazing creature that deserves our attention and careful study. Some of the butterflies are used as indicators to identify habitats that are critical and requires immediate attention for conservation. Butterflies also are important pollinators. They form an integral part of the food web. Apart from that, they add beauty to nature. Butterflies require a careful study, as I told you earlier, and we can only neglect them to our own peril. So it's Every, so every effort needs to be done to conserve, to protect these wonderful creatures. The Lepidopteran fossil, including butterflies and moths, dates back over 200 million years, making their presence long before there were flowers that they could pollinate. Though butterflies and moths were earlier taught they evolved after the flowers did. The recent fossils suggest that they evolved much before that and they shared food with early dinosaurs. This new fossil finding also makes scientists rethink about Lepidoptera evolution. Even the coiled mouth parts or the proboscis, what the butterflies or moths use to suck nectar from the flowers have originally developed before the flowering plants did. So they have different purpose. The proboscis which evolved had a different purpose rather than only sucking nectar from the flowers. Whatever. Butterflies have added immensely to the beauty of planet Earth since their existence. My journey with butterflies started when I was 19, when I was allotted a project on study of local butterflies by my zoology professor, Ashok C.H. Those days, I recorded about 30 species of butterflies in my locality. We had a wild patch of Clerodendron viscosa, the flowering plants, which used to attract hundreds of butterflies. And the one butterfly which was more fascinated, the most fascinated was the Malabar banded peacock, the butterfly which is endemic to Western Guards, which is found only in Western Guards, and was rated as the third beautiful butterfly in India by Winter Blit, who wrote the field guide on butterflies of Indian region. Even though the butterfly is endemic to Western Guards, it is more common towards the coastal region of Western Guards, flying at a lower altitude. This butterfly use two different colors depending on the angle what you see it. If you look at the butterfly below your eye level, it is metallic green and above your eye level, it is metallic blue. And as a rule, every butterfly has got its own host plant to lay their eggs. The Malabar banded peacock prefers the big tree called as Zanthuselum red star, which is again found only in western guards. In the year 2011, we recorded about 70 species of butterflies. And in 2013, it was 113 species of butterflies. And at present, we have recorded 147 species of butterflies out of the 339 species found in Western Guards. All over India, 
you have 1,200 species of butterflies. The life cycle of the butterfly is an amazing story. It starts with the egg, then the caterpillar, then the chrysalis, and the final state being the adult. Like all creatures do, butterflies are involved in courtship display, with the male butterfly display to impress the females. So if the female is attracted or impressed by the display or by the chemical signals what is released by the male, it accepts and the mating takes place. And the female, after that, she goes in search of the host plant to lay her eggs. As I mentioned, every butterfly has got its own host plant to lay the eggs. They are very specific about the host. So if you remove a caterpillar from its host plant and place it in some other area, it's a death sentence for the caterpillar. Even if the female chooses the wrong plant, then the caterpillar, which is going to come out of the egg, it's going to starve to death. So after the egg is being laid on the coast or near the coast, not necessarily all butterflies will lay directly on the coast. Some might lay somewhere near the coast. So it becomes a job of the caterpillar to go in search of the coast nearby, not very far. So after about four to five days, the caterpillar normally come out of the egg, depending on the species again. Sometimes it might take a week or more than that also. After the caterpillar comes out, it turns back and feeds on its own action at the first foot of the caterpillar. Not necessarily again, all of them have to feed on their own action, but they come out by feeding on their own action. Then they start feeding on the host and they start growing. <coughs> Once they fully grow, they have to search a hydor for pupating. They have to go to the next stage, the third stage, the chrysalis. After they search a hydor, they make a silk thread, the view of silk pad also, the silk pad which is used to hang. This great change is taking place with the caterpillar becoming chrysalis, also another amazing thing happening in the life cycle of the butterfly. The skin starts rupturing at the top and sheds off outside along with the head cap shoe. Just imagine. Inside the chrysalis also, there is great changes taking place. The caterpillar very systematically liquefies and rearranges to form a butterfly. So it might take anywhere from a week to a month for the butterfly to fully develop and it closes out. But not necessarily that the butterfly has to come out within that stipulated time. Some of them might take about two to three months to come out if the conditions outside are not favorable. So that means probably the emerging out of the chrysalis in the wild is a voluntary process and it is a butterfly which decides whether to come out or not depending on the conditions outside. The idea of setting up a butterfly park was born after I came across a book on Indian butterflies by the butterfly man of India, Isaac Chemical. He mentions in his book the importance of butterfly conservation. We started propagating more native plants where the butterfly preferred to lay eggs. If you retain a natural habitat, if you retain a natural habitat with host plants and nectar plants, you'll see automatically the butterfly population sustained. So we did exactly the same. We started propagating native plants. We retain a big area as a buffer zone without human intervention, again, which is very much important for the butterfly population to sustain. If I have to mention some of the host plants which you are familiar with, the mango serves as host plant for common imperial and common baron. The curry leaf plant serves as host plant for lime butterfly and common normal. If you take cinnamon, it's host plant for common mime and common blue bottle. So the list goes on. 
So the primary objective of the butterfly park was to conserve butterflies of the Western Ghats and create a habitat for the same. And then the park also focused on educating people about butterflies. We ensure that every visitor who visits the butterfly park, his way of looking at butterflies will definitely change. I'm very, also very glad to share with you, after the visit to the butterfly park, many got inspired to conserve the natural habitat, which is very much important, because the butterflies prefer the native plants with the herbs, shrubs, or trees. They started conserving these herbs, shrubs, where they thought once that these were weed, now they know that the butterflies prefer that. And it's very much required for the butterfly population to sustain. I hope we'll inspire many like this and involve each and everyone to protect nature. Earth is a beautiful planet supporting great forms of life. We have been destroying its wilderness from decades. It's time now that we all pledge ourselves to conserve our planet. And I believe when we involve each and everyone in the process and we, when we start loving nature and when we start loving our planet, we're going to nurture enough because we care what we love. And remember, this true love for nature and respect for nature will make you rich beyond measure. My love for butterflies also led to filming of these magical moments of the, at the butterfly park. And here, the video goes like this. <laughs>
video made you the f made you feel the transcendence of nature. Thank you, one and all.